The Strong's Concordance defines Gehenna as the Valley of or the Son of Hinnom, a valley of Jerusalem used figuratively as a name for the place or state of everlasting punishment, hell. So Gehenna is the Greek translation for a valley called the Valley of Ahinnom, or the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. It is used 12 times in the New Testament, and it's always translated as hell. But to really understand its true meaning, we need to understand its history. Gehenna is often taught as being a valley where they had this fire, constantly burning garbage and other refuse. And that's fine. But instead of going to extra biblical sources, let's just see what the Bible says about Gehenna. Let's go first to the book of Joshua and learn of its location. Joshua 15, verse 8. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom, now this is Gehenna in the Greek, onto the south side of the Jebusite. The same is Jerusalem. So Gehenna is south of Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom, westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants, northward. And we can get an idea of its location from this illustration I downloaded from Google Images. Now let's go to 1 Kings to learn about the abominable practices of this place and why our Lord has such disdain for it. 1 Kings chapter 11. And it came to pass when Solomon, this is King Solomon, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. So as Solomon got older, his heart was turned away from the Lord. Verse 7, Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. And this hill will come to be known as the hill of corruption and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So King Solomon built these places of worship for the gods of his strange wives, including Molech and Chemosh. Now let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 28 and see King Ahaz continue in this abomination. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images for Baalim. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, again, this is Gehenna, and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in high places, and on the hills and under every green tree. So this valley of Hinnom, this Gehenna, became a place of idolatry and child sacrifice. So let's explain what is meant by the verse, and burn his children in the fire. You see, these pagan rituals often involve temple prostitutes, and these rituals would include sexual orgies. So obviously, these women would end up pregnant, and because these babies were conceived in the worship of their pagan god, and not knowing or caring who the father might be, these babies were offered to these pagan gods in the form of burnt offerings. Now this sounds horrible to us, and it is, but understand, all idolatry is sin. Not just the ones that upset our carnal sensibilities. All idolatry is sin and just as upsetting to our father. Now King Ahaz had a son named Hezekiah who did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and he destroyed all these pagan temples. But his son Manasseh did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 33, pick it up at verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, but did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Now as we read these next verses, let our focus be on all the forms of idolatry not just the ones that upset our carnal sensibilities. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Baalim, and made groves, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, wherein the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord, 
And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. And again, Gehenna. Now remember, as bad as this was, these next are also just as bad and sinful to our father. Also, he observed times, and used enchantments, and used witchcraft, and dealt with familiar spirits and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now this idolatry and these sacrifices were eventually ended by King Josiah. Let's turn to Second Kings chapter 23. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and with all their soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in the book, and all the people stood by the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the field of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. Verse 10. And he, King Josiah, defiled Tophet, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, this is Gehenna, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Moloch. Let's go to verse 12. And the altars that were on top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had built for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he brake in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of men. And even though this idolatry, this turning away from the true God, to the worshipping of false gods, gods who are not gods, even though this idolatry ended for a while, it will not go unanswered, not then, not during the time of Jesus, and not in these times. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 7, pick it up at verse 30. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the sons of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. So Tophet is a specific place in the valley of Hinnom, or in Gehenna, where they, where they sacrificed their children, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, no longer called Gehenna, but the valley of slaughter. For they, and this is speaking of all Jerusalem, for they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. So why is this called the Valley of Slaughter? Not for the children that were sacrificed here, but for the judgment that God will bring upon Jerusalem. You see, this judgment, this slaughter, this destruction is going to be so severe and so complete, there will be no place to bury their dead, as in the mass graves will be overflowing. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the falls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. Those carcasses that could not be buried, that are just lying there in the sun, and none shall fray them away. Those fowls, those unclean birds, when shooed away, will just hop from one corpse to another. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and, and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, and the land shall be desolate, destroyed from the war and famine. God is promising to destroy Jerusalem because they have forsaken him. And this is the key to understanding Gehenna in the New Testament. You see, Jesus will use Tophet, this Gehenna, this valley of slaughter, as a mental picture for a warning of the physical and spiritual slaughter that is coming again to Jerusalem if God's people, if the nation, will not repent. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 19. Thus saith the Lord, this is our Father speaking to Jeremiah, Go and get a potter's earthen vessel, and take of the ancients of the people, that's the elders, and of the ancients of the priests, and go unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, again Gehenna, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, 
I will bring evil upon this place, that's Judah and Jerusalem, the which whosoever heareth, his ear shall tingle. And we know historically that this evil, this destruction, this slaughter happened to Judah at the time of the Babylonian exile. And we'll see Jesus' reference to this valley refers not only to our spiritual destruction, but also the destruction that will happen by the Romans in A.D. 70. Verse 4, Because they, the kings and the people, have forsaken me, they turned their hearts away from God, and have estranged this place, and have burned incense in it to other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and filled this place with the blood of innocents. Now listen carefully. This is speaking spiritually. You see, these souls were innocent, but because they forsook God, because God was no longer a part of their lives, they were easily led astray. And so, because they were led astray, they have built also the high places of Baal, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the sons of Hinnom, no more called Gehenna, but the valley of slaughter. And again, this is not because of the babies that were killed or sacrificed there. This is because of the slaughter that the Lord will bring upon Jerusalem. Now, as we read the rest of these verses, listen to the anger in our Father's voice. Verse 7, And I will make void the consul, that's the war consuls, of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hands of them that seek their lives, and their carcass will I give to be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and in hissing. Every one that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hissed because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. The famine brought on by the Babylonian siege will be so severe that people will turn to cannibalism. Then shalt thou break the bottle, that clay bottle from verse 1, in the sight of the men that go with thee, those ancient men and priests, again from verse 1, and shall say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city, as one breaketh a potter's vessel, that cannot be made whole again. The destruction of Judah, the slaughter, will be so severe and complete, and they shall bury them in Tophet, till there be no place to bury. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. Remember, no longer called Gehenna, but the valley of slaughter. And again, it's this slaughtering from the Lord that is the key to understanding Gehenna in the New Testament. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the king of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burnt incense unto all the hosts of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. You see, it wasn't just the kings of Judah that had turned their backs on the Most High. It was the whole nation that was led astray and forsook God. It was the whole nation that wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Verse 14, Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord has sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house, and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words. So we can see it's not a light thing to forsake our father. Let's go to Jeremiah 4. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, Return unto me, stop your idolatry, and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. And thou shalt swear, not just lip service, but mean it, the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among the thorns. Circumcise yourself to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now the foreskin of your heart is what hides your heart from the truth of God's word. Lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench it. Now underline that. 
because of the evil of your doings. Now, let's go to chapter 17. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond, like a chisel. It is graven upon the tables of their hearts and upon the horns of your altars, whilst their children remember their altars, that's their parents' altars, and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. You see, their idolatry was so ingrained in their hearts that they even raised their children in this abomination. O oh, my mountain in the field! Now this is Jerusalem, it's a term of endearment. But listen to the anger in our Lord's voice. I will give thy substance and thy treasures to the spoil, the spoils of war, and, the, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, meaning Babylon. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Underline that, it shall never be quenched. So this fire that cannot be quenched, this Gehenna fire, is not a description of a tormenting hell, but rather it's a description of the fierce anger of God, its complete destruction from the Lord. Let's skip to verse 27. But if you will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Again, let's go to chapter 21. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, Execute judgment in the morning, and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressors, lest my fury go out like fire, and burn that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain. Again, this is Jerusalem. It's the same as mountain of the field from chapter 17. Saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us, or who shall enter into our habitation? The people felt so secure and safe. But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, saith the Lord, and I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things round about it. And again, this fire that cannot be quenched isn't a tormenting fire of an eternal hell. Again, it's complete destruction from the Lord. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 19. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. So even the phrase fire and brimstone doesn't describe the fiery eternal hell that we've been taught. It describes complete destruction from the Lord. Let's go to Psalms chapter 11. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. In Leviticus chapter 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them their censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Second Kings chapter 1 Then the king sent unto him, that's Elijah, a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of an hill, and he spoke unto him, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus saith the king, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Take heed unto yourself, lest you forget the covenant, that's the promise, of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee idolatry. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So now we see that it's the Lord himself that is an all-consuming fire, 
and that Gehenna fire refers, refers to our Father and his anger and the destruction he brings upon the nations and peoples that forsake him. Now lastly, let's go to Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost, in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Now listen closely to this next verse. And he, Moses, called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord, this consuming fire, burnt among them. So understand that this event was so significant that Moses felt he had to name this place to preserve the memory of this punishment as an example for generations to come that it might be a warning to others. And this destruction happened throughout the history of Israel and Judah because God's children continually turned their backs on him. It happened during the time of Moses. It happened during the time of the judges. It happened when the Assyrians conquered the northern tribes of Israel. It happened when the Babylonians conquered Judah. And it happened again when Titus conquered Jerusalem. And as we look at the New Testament, we'll see that Jesus used the imagery of slaughter by the Babylonians this imagery of Gehenna and Tophet to warn his multitude of followers, his church, to repent and to come out of the false doctrines brought on by the influences of his time. And these evil influences are very active even in this present day. Now let's go to the New Testament and look at this word Gehenna.